welcome to Swipe. We've got an eclectic mix for you this week. Here's what's coming up over the next 10 minutes. Testing times for Angela as she faces the job interview of the future. I get a look at a magic table for people living with dementia. And Cam is setting up the first human colony on Mars in our game review. That's all to come, but we'll begin by getting a quick look at some of the tech stories that made headlines this week. Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg turned down a request from the British government to give evidence to ministers investigating the alleged abuse of user data. He offered to send an executive in his place instead. The chair of the parliamentary committee described it as absolutely astonishing. Meanwhile, the Cambridge Analytica whistleblower Christopher Wiley gave evidence suggesting Facebook data had a huge impact on the outcome of the 2016 referendum on Britain's membership of the EU. A giant vending machine for cars has opened in China. The Super Test Drive Centre in Guangzhou offers motorists a three-day test drive with cars they select using a mobile app. Bookings are confirmed with a selfie. The vending machine, which holds 100 cars, is the result of a partnership between retail giants Alibaba and Ford. Driverless minibuses are being used to help transport people around a Berlin hospital. The German government has pointed out they're doing things very differently to Uber. The country's environment minister acknowledged Uber's recent fatal accident, but said they're carrying out testing in very gradual steps with completely different velocity. The buses will have a staff member on board until completely driverless trials later on. And TalkTalk Talk is facing renewed calls to improve its security after a hacker contacted Sky News about a flaw in its web system that went unfixed for years. The hacker found a way to potentially trick customers into thinking they were accessing the real TalkTalk Talk website. The company's fixed it and says there's no evidence to suggest that any customers were affected. TalkTalk Talk was previously given a record fine after a major breach in 2015. Next up this week, Angela has been mingling with business innovators to get a look at how technology will impact our future workplace, including how we might get hired for new jobs. I'm about to take a mixed reality assessment test, which could be how we are interviewed for jobs in the future. Startup ActiveView is behind the technology, which they say can be used by employers to scan applicants and predict their suitability for a new role. Wearing a VR headset, candidates are instructed in a simulated environment like this to carry out a series of tasks. Data is then collected based on the decisions made. Basically, everything, everything that you look at, everything that you point, point at, talk if you talk in a specific experience, we uh, analyze it through machine learning algorithms and we can get to understand what are your characteristics. But as we could see, uh, you are very organized in the way you approach a problem, very structured. Yes, uh, and very smart. Very smart. <laughs> Vault is another startup getting attention. It gives employees the opportunity to report any incidents of harassment at work using blockchain technology. It aims to create a safe and encrypted digital space to report something anonymously. And you start by creating a deposit where you can choose between whether it was bullying, discrimination or sexual harassment. At the very heart of the user experience is this notion of matching logic. So once you enter your perpetrator name, the system can then let you know whether you are part of a wider pattern. As well as blockchain and virtual assessment technologies, there's also a lot of hype around the use of automation in the recruitment process via chatbots. But where do companies draw the line when it comes to minimising human interaction? Robo Recruiter is one of the firms showcasing automated messaging. It says computer program responses are being taken further because it saves employers time on the more repetitive and mundane tasks. If you're looking to hire someone, one of the big things you're probably going to be asking them are those pals questions. So you use the chatbot to be able to pre-qualify the person, which allows you to have a much more meaningful conversation. We spoke to one of the masterminds behind an organisation that helped change the world of online communications for his view on the technologies disrupting job functions. For me, it's not just about the technology. We hear a lot about AI, we hear about blockchains. It's, me, it's more for me about how do we solve the problem of actually working better together? And how can we enable technology to help ourselves create better or more innovative products by using technology, both by getting people on board, but also enhancing the working relationship. And there I see technology mixing, you know, the art and science becoming even more vibrant. 
As employers look at those faster and cheaper ways of working, automation dominates the agenda. But the challenge for employers is to strike a balance between technological advancement and maintaining the human heart and personality of their company. Angela Barnes, Sky News. Now, if you've ever had a family member or friend living with dementia, you'll know how precious happy moments are. And it's that enjoyment that's behind the development of a unique game created in the Netherlands that's begun to arrive in UK dementia care homes. These children might be dominating this game, but it was made for the older players around the table. They have dementia. The light projected game system is called the Tova Tafel, that's Dutch for magic table. Infrared sensors detect hand and arm movements, so when players touch the animations, the images move and react. The games are designed to create moments of happiness and combat apathy by helping those who have a go to be sociable, mentally stimulated and physically active. Three key areas for people living with dementia. Oh, that was a big one. <laughs> It was developed in the Netherlands and now John here is helping roll it out in the UK and Ireland to as many care homes, community centres and libraries as possible. He gave up his job as a lawyer to focus on the project. John's dad was diagnosed with dementia when he was a child. I saw a great man who was a consultant in London uh, become someone that didn't recognise me, wasn't able to have any sort of relationship with me. So when I saw a piece of technology that was proven and researched to create that relationship and that interaction, I just knew I had to get involved. I'm going to get the ladybird. School children visit this care home regularly. It ensures the technology keeps being used and John says helps bring communities together. The cost of the Toba Taffel starts at £6,000 and some care homes will struggle to afford one. But staff here seem convinced of a positive impact on residents with dementia. Obviously for someone living with dementia, um, one of the risks for us is they tend to withdraw and withdraw into themselves. Uh, so anything that can actually bring them out uh, to share an experience, to spend more time with others and actually to, to exhibit some physical behaviour and activity, so it's really nice to be able to see them move, engage, smile and enjoy the experience. See oh, what look, I mean? Look. Oh look, no, Ooh, no, no, it's, it's bigger. bigger. That's really creepy, Kate. <laughs> I got that one, I got that one. There's another version of the Toba Tafel made for people with learning disabilities that's already out in the Netherlands. And I'm told there'll be a new set of games specifically designed for children with autism due for release at the beginning of next year. It will be a stylish marriage. So far, this relatively simple technology seems to be creating a lot of smiles. Upon the seat of a bicycle made for two. A different kind of gaming now. Here's Cam with his review of some of the latest video game releases. Surviving Mars is a brand new game for PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC. And the game is all about establishing that first human colony on the red planet. Surviving Mars begins with you actually before all the humans arrive. You know, you need to set up the infrastructure for their arrival. So that might mean placing solar panels for power or wind turbines, and also creating uh, devices that can harvest rock from the Martian surface to make concrete for your buildings. And that's one of the things this game does best, is it really straddles that line between scientific accuracy and also fun. Like, it never lets that stuff get in the way of what is a good game. My only criticism would be that in the beginning, there's not a lot of tutorial to really guide you in the right direction. So your first few bases will probably be a complete disaster, but that's okay. Just try, try again. Northgard is a brand new real-time strategy game that sets you in control of a group of Vikings. Now, it, it's very reminiscent of kind of early civilization games combined with a bit of early Warcraft and also Age of Empires. But don't let that kind of nostalgic backdrop to the game put you off because it, there's a lot of new things and is really enjoyable. I think perhaps the, the best thing about Northgard is that it puts you in charge of a group of Vikings and as a result, you know, you're, you're building your little troop into a fully functioning society. 
Now, yes, there are a lot of challenges in Northgard. There are other Viking tribes to contend with. There are even wolves and other wildlife that will attack you without warning. But the biggest foe you have to deal with is winter. So you need to be thinking all the way through Northgard, oh, do I have enough supplies of food for winter? Do I have enough wood for firewood? Otherwise, when that season rolls around, you're probably going to die. But it's a great game, definitely worth checking out, and that's on PC. Burnout Paradise Remastered is one of those games that when I saw it was being remastered, I was just really, really excited. Because you see a lot of remasters, and sometimes you're thinking, is this worth it? Burnout Paradise Remastered is definitely one of those. If you've never played Burnout before, what Burnout Paradise does is it puts you in a fast car in the middle of a city that is just a playground for you to drive around and to smash into. And while this may seem a bit daunting at first, you know, often if a game is open world, you can be spoiled for choices. What Burnout Paradise does so well is presents you with this open world but lets you discover what the opportunities are. So you can drive all around this, this huge city which has a very diverse selection of locations. What I like about the way this remastered has been done is the emphasis has been on keeping that smooth 60 frames per second frame rate. So the game, the game feels fast. You really get that sensation of speed, which is so important. So there's a lot in here, and if you've never played Burnout Paradise, then you should definitely check out the remaster. Assassin's Creed Rogue is kind of the Assassin's Creed game that missed a lot of people. It arrived at that awkward moment when we were jumping from the era of the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 to the Xbox One and the PS4. So actually a whole lot of people never played this game, which is why Ubisoft have remastered it. It's that usual combination when it comes to the gameplay of exploration and assassination combined with some really great sailing and, and piracy elements, which is a lot of fun. However, where I think this game suffers, this remaster suffers, is, is from the success of the most recent Assassin's Creed game, Origins, which is fantastic and actually altered a whole load of, of elements from the game subtly. And as a result, I think Rogue, even in its remastered form, does kind of show its age. It still looks great and it plays very well on the PlayStation 4. So if you're a really huge fan of the series, then I definitely would recommend checking out Rogue. But if not, and you want to play a new Assassin's Creed game, maybe check out Origins. That's a fantastic one. Well, that's it for this week's show. Don't forget to join us for more Swipe next week. And in the meantime, why not follow us on Twitter? Then you can see what we get up to throughout the week. At Sky News Swipe. Bye-bye.